Today, Karis graduate Ricky Burge is transforming Africa with the message of God's unconditional love and grace, a truth that changed his life not long ago. This is the story of how Karis Bible College helped a former drug dealer discover his purpose to disciple nations. This is the destiny story of Ricky Burge. I'm from Gary, Indiana. My mother's from Alabama. My father's from Gary, Indiana. When I was eight, so they got a divorce, he, he left. So I kind of grew up with my mother. So I kind of just grew up alone on my own. And so of course I got into the normal stuff, got into gangs, got into drugs, selling drugs, running with the wrong people, doing all the wrong stuff, breaking in people's houses, anything for money. Actually, there was this house where we all used to be and we all used to sell drugs out of this house. And so there, there was this one time when I got into a fight with this guy. Um, and so after that fight, I got, I got the best of them and everybody was happy, oh, let's go to the club. So these guys put something in my drink or whatever. And so the next morning, I woke up in an abandoned building and my jewelry was gone, my gun was gone, the drugs, I used to keep drugs in the trunk, all of that was gone, the car was gone. Man, I just had this, man, I want to kill these guys, you know. After being left for dead, Ricky knew it was time for change and reached out to the one person he could trust, his cousin, a longtime Christian who constantly prayed for Ricky to leave the drug dealing lifestyle behind. My cousin, he gave me the CD and the CD was called Before You Die. And it was by this, this guy named Lecrae and a couple other people. And it was a rap CD, right? It was rap music, but it was clean rap music. So I checked it out. That was the first time I understood the gospel when I listened to this CD. So it was like evangelizing through music. So he was trying to get me and he got me because the guy on the CD was saying from Romans chapter three, was like, there's none good, there's none righteous, there's none who seeks after God. And you know, most people probably get upset when they hear that, but it was good news to me to hear that none's good. Cause I used to think that some people were good and some people were bad. And I used to think that I was on the bad side and there's no way I'm gonna get to the good side. It just removed the separation in my mind. Maybe God would accept somebody like me. So I listened to that CD for probably two, three weeks, over and over in the car, over and over. And you know, I'm still doing what I'm doing, listen to the CD. So I'll be selling drugs, right? And I pull up and I'm meeting somebody and I do what I'm supposed to do. And I'm listening to the CD, but when he comes, I turn it down so he couldn't hear it. Cause I didn't want him to think I was like, whatever, weird or something. And uh, I went to my cousin house on a Wednesday night and my cousin had a little Bible study and I just sat there, you know, I want to see if this CD is really for real. And I stayed in the living room with me and him and I was like, man, you know, I'm tired. He was like, all right, we're going to pray. So he prayed for me, laid hands on me. And I'm telling you, man, like I met God, like I had experience. And that thing keep, it's almost 10 years and I'm still living off that experience. Like I had an encounter with God, it changed my whole life. And so since that time, I started doing ministry and stuff and I had got a job, I was living right, doing good. But in my heart, it was like, this ain't it. I just felt this emptiness. I felt this like, man, I'm supposed to do something with my life. I felt this purpose and I didn't know how to find it. So I would go to my pastor, go to the elder, go to the people that I knew and they say, how do you find your purpose? And nobody could tell me. One of the elders from my church took me to Chicago and we went to O'Hare where Andrew had his conference. God has a perfect plan for your life. God is almighty. He created you with a destiny. He's got a purpose for your life. And one of the things that you need to decide is that I am not smart enough to sit here and choose my own path and do my own thing. You are free to do that. God won't force you. But the smart decision is to run up the flag and say, God, I want your will. I need to know you have a plan for my life. And then I think it was Ashley Teradez that came on stage talking about Karis Bible College. So I went to the meeting and I heard about it and the Lord was like, this is it, will you say yes? And that was August, 2011. I left my job, I left everything and I moved from Gary, Indiana to Colorado Springs by November, 2011. That was like two months. 
and I started as a November student. The Bible College has really prepared me to be a minister. All of my doctrine comes from Karis. So I came to Karis to find my destiny. I came to find my purpose. And so I started reading the Bible. I started listening to every class looking to find myself. And uh, I found it in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. Those from among you shall rebuild the old waste places. You shall raise up foundations for many generations. You shall be called the repair of the breach and restore of streets to dwell in. And the Lord spoke to me, that's you. You're a repair of the breach and restore of streets to dwell in. He spoke to me through the life of Moses. He said Moses was an Israelite, but he was raised in Egypt and he was raised as an Egyptian, pretty much. Educated as an Egyptian, all of this. But in Acts chapter seven, it said it entered his heart to go and visit his brethren. For he thought they would understand that the Lord's gonna deliver them through his hand. And the Lord told me the same thing. He said, you are African-American, you're from Africa, but you were raised in Egypt. You were raised in America, educated in America. And I'm putting it in your heart to go and visit your brethren. And if you go back, I'll deliver them through your hand. And that's how I found my purpose. And I said, all right, Great Commission Africa, I gotta do that. And uh, that's how it worked out. While God was calling Ricky to Africa, Mark Rowe, the Director of Discipleship Evangelism Missionary Outreach, was praying for an answer on how to better steward the ministry in Uganda. Ever since Kara's graduate Leland Shores introduced Andrew's Discipleship Evangelism, the country has needed a teacher to help them stay in line with Andrew's heart. This young man called Ricky Burge was brought to my attention by Greg Moore, the director of Caris Bible College, who's a longtime friend as well. And he said, this young man is just awesome. And he came and when he shared his heart about his passion for Africa, to go there, I mean, he wanted to change the whole world right there and then, but I mean, his passion and enthusiasm was just such a blessing. But I felt the Holy Spirit say, this young man is gonna be your secret weapon. If he wants to go on the ground, he will be your eyes and ears your hands and your feet. He will be able to oversee what you can't see. Mark asked me to come to Karamoja to take part in evangelizing and discipling a people group called the Karamojong. And the tool that we used to do that was the Discipleship Evangelism Program. It's 48 lessons divided into three levels. Each level has 16 lessons. Um, it takes them from eternal life, relationship with God, Basically, spirit, soul, and body, the true nature of God, the authority of the believer, God wants you well. All of Andrew's teachings, plus some of Don Crow's teachings, who was an associate of Andrew Womack, and they've condensed them into this uh, discipleship evangelism course. There's not been one place where I go where people understand grace. And there's not been one place I go where the church has a culture of discipleship. Everywhere I go, it's, it's non-existent. So you're talking about hard, religious ground. They have a zeal for God, but it's not according to knowledge. It's a lot of assumptions. We assume God is like this. We assume ministry is like this because uh, deep in these places, these are hard to reach areas where people don't concentrate because there's no money there or whatever. But when you get down deep into these places, that's when you're reaching real Africa and that's traditional Africans. So you're not just going to go in there and save the day. So. Um, that's what discipleship evangelism does. It goes in and it's kind of like the first thing we can use to introduce people to these new concepts and ideas. With the discipleship evangelism program, what you see is growth. You see Christians who are born again, but they're not stuck anymore. Their eyes are being opened. The truth is setting them free. They're getting an intimate relationship with God. Now they're, they're serving Him because they love Him and not because they are under fear of obligation. They want to, they don't have to. And so that sets pastors free. We taught them that if you pour into your disciples in the church, your disciples will make other disciples, which will make the church grow. And some of those disciples will become shepherds. They'll be pastors in new locations. And so the churches are growing. I mean, when we were in Karamoja 2014, they started with 80 churches. Up to today, it's over 150. That is a direct result of what discipleship does. And then from there, we went to Rwanda. Uh, five places in Rwanda, three in Eastern Province, one in Kigali, the capital city, and one in uh, Southern Province, Rwanda. And also we're working in Juba, South Sudan. Each of these locations, we are discipling pastors, teaching and coaching and training them on how to develop a culture of discipleship and how to understand the full revelation of the gospel of grace. He's just like Andrew, the word is just in him. 
and it just pops out just like that. But he's been there, what, four years or more now? And most of the work on the ground is due to him. He, his work ethic is outstanding. Through individuals like Ricky Burge, God is doing incredible things in Africa, and hearts are being transformed by the power of the gospel. This was evident in Andrew's 2018 trip to Uganda, where he ministered to his largest live audience ever. To our friends and partners, we say thank you for helping us raise up leaders like Ricky Burge, who are going out and changing the world forever.